three, two. Ew. Hello, Chief the Nation. I'm Jasper Jones. And I'm Maya Burgraff. Well, just as I promised last year, this is a new TV2. And so with the new TV2, we decided to add this. We named him Sheldon. It fits well. I feel like a proud father. Anyway, here's your announcements. Howdy, y'all. Do y'all like to dance? If so, there's an upcoming 4-H dance that'll be held at the Youth Center at the on the Hawking County Fairgrounds on January 18th. This event will be held from 6 to 9 p.m. The cost will be $5 to a person. If you want to know more information, contact the OSU Extension at 740-385-3222. That's 740-385-3222. Get ready, ladies and gents. The Winter Wonderland dance is upon us. The dance is tonight and at 7, and if you haven't already copped your tickets, then you can purchase them at the door. I hope everyone has a fun night and gets some good rest over the weekend. You know, it's not much of a winter wonderland, more or less a slightly cold, little rainy dance. Anyway, continuing with the dance, everyone of course has someone in mind that they want to take to the dance. But if you have someone who does not go to the school, you need to know some rules first. You need a form written about the guest and approved by a principal before they can come. These forms will be in the office. That's it. Go have fun. Hello, beautiful seniors. This is a reminder that your portraits should be turned into Mrs. Myers in room 202 or, room, or emailed to her by February 28th. Your senior photos should be the head and shoulders with the neutral background. Make sure the background doesn't have logos, words, or any distractions. For more specifics on the digital photos, check out the daily announcements. In local news, we all know that shopping can be a hassle sometimes, but Crooker has teamed up with Microsoft to try and make new electronic shelves that will make finding groceries easier. One of these stores trying this new system is a Kroger in Cincinnati. What you do is you go to self-checkout and you pick the items you want to find, and then there will be little icons below the items so you, can go, so you can go find them where they're at in the store. I think this is pretty cool. As a fellow Kroger employee, this would help me so much. Lord knows how many times an elderly lady asked me what the daggone milk was. Grandma. Everyone knows that there was a snake in Woody's boot, but did you know there was a snake in Barry's kettle? I bet you didn't. Barry Downs, a London man, purchased a tea kettle in post-Christmas sale. He explained to RSPCA Animal Collection Officer Ella Davies that, she, that he had problems with his sight, and upon seeing the corn snake, he thought it was a string or a part of the plastic packaging. He only realized it was alive when he picked it up. Quick acting Barry and trapped the snake with a saucepan lid and called the authorities. Let's just say that if I was put in that slippery situation, it wouldn't have ended the same way. Well, Maya, he just wanted to see Brew. He wanted to say how beautiful you were. Man, my puns are worse than Klein. Speaking of Klein, here's Weather Time with Klein. Hey, you! Welcome back, Logan High School. I hope you all enjoyed your Christmas break. Now, let, now it's time to hop into your Chieftain weather. On Friday, they'll be mostly cloudy with a high of 35 and low of 24. On Saturday, there'll be snow showers with a high of 32 and low of 25. On Sunday, it'll be cloudy with a high of 38 and low of 23. On Monday, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 38 and low of 23 again. And on Tuesday, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 42 and low of 28. What did the duck detective say to his partner? I have quack this case. 
Now time for your Chieftain Sports with Lexus Fickle and Daniel Schwartz. school it's been cold sort of but anyway that's Klein's job um, I'm Daniel Schwartz and filling in for Lexus today is Bryce Berry yeah uh, now here's your sports the boys basketball team traveled to Whitehall last Tuesday night the boys took an early 14 to 5 lead and extended it from there to win 49 to 37 JV and varsity are headed to Mount Vernon tomorrow with varsity scheduled to start at 430 Last Saturday, the girls' basketball team traveled to Dublin Jerome to take on the Lady Celtics. Quarter after quarter, the Lady Chiefs were neck and neck with the Lady Celtics, and the Lady Chiefs were only down by one point going into the fourth quarter, giving the game a very intense conclusion, as the Lady Chiefs failed to take the lead, leaving the final score at 40 to 43. The Logan wrestling team traveled to Sheridan last Saturday. The team finished fifth. Colt Hall finished third, Brandon Johnson and Justin Mustard finished fourth, Ethan Worthman and Seth Barnes finished fifth. The boys will compete in the Central Crossing Comet Classic tomorrow. Also last Saturday, the boys and girls bowling teams went to a Baker tournament in Chillicothe to go against nine, 19 other teams. And what do you know, they placed third. The boys had a total of 3,140 pins and the girls had a total of 2,235 pins. Splendid job, bowlers. Well, that's all we have for this week. Uh, I'm Daniel Schwartz. And I'm Bryce Berry. Now here's a Chieftain PSA. There's a serious problem facing all of us today. People are being judged on their orientation. And that's just not right. This video is shot vertically or in portrait mode. See the black bars and empty space on the side? The solution is simple, however, you can't fix it while you're still recording. Just simply shoot in the horizontal or landscape orientation and voila, no more black bars, no more empty space. And remember, friends, don't let friends shoot portrait. Now here's a story with Logan Lilly on Mr. John McClain. The LHS choir program has come a long way under the commission of Mr. McLean. With this being his fourth year here in charge of the LHS choir, we decided to take an inside look on the progress and development Mr. McLean has made and endured with the LHS choir program. What, in your opinion, is your favorite moment here in the four years that you've been here at LHS? Well, it's really been a, an awesome four years. Um, so when I came here, the students that I had as freshmen are now seniors. So um, it's kind of come full circle, and I've never experienced that before. So at the, my pre previous job, I taught um, at West Jefferson High School and Middle School for just one year, and then I came here. So we're really making some progress with the program, and I couldn't be happier with where we are. But probably a highlight for me uh, was last year, actually. So um, in June of the school year before that, the Chamber Singers and I prepared this audition recording for this inaugural uh, high school national choir festival. And I didn't know much about it, but I, uh, our choir was invited to even audition. We were one of um, a couple hundred, I think, that submitted a recording. And then by the time everything was said and done, we got our invitation. We were one in 12 in the United States to be invited to this first event of its kind. It had never been done before. So with that came some anxiety of like, I don't know what to do, what songs to choose. Um, 
And it was a certain level of preparation that this program, even as a student, when I was here, um, we, we hadn't ever been faced with something on the national level. So March rolls around and it's time to head, to head to Indianapolis. We get on the bus and there's this excitement in the air and it's just, it's awesome. Um, and I think what made it a highlight for me probably most of all is to see students, most of them who are still current students now, step up to a level of musicianship and maturity beyond what they ever imagined that they could achieve. What do you think you can do to push the choir program even further? Well, I think that there are multiple levels to the answer to that question. So as with choir and with any other subject in the state of Ohio or any state in this country, there are standards that I have to meet as a teacher. A lot of my friends, teacher friends, joke with me and say, like, what'd you do today, McLean? Like, just teach him song of the day. Um, and really, there's a, lot, there's a lot more to it, as with any subject area that anybody has a specialty in. So on the, on the micro level, or what happens day to day, one thing we're working on right now is um, it's my goal that any senior or any person who takes this, uh, any class of our six in the choir program, that they graduate from that year having been able to be better or start or achieve reading music. Um, because a lot of times in choirs, singers can come in and they don't ever have to look at a piece of music and be like, oh, that note is higher than that, that note or that note is lower than that note. And the longer you have choir, the more you're able to read music. But um, so it's a standard of the state. And it's my goal that, like I said, once you leave this choir program, you can sit down, open up a piece of music, any genre, not choir music, pop, rock, jazz, anything, and be able to be like, yep, I can at least like find my way around this. With four years in the, in the choir program, there's still so much more to be accomplished. Logan Lilly, TV2 News. Well, everybody, that's all that we have for this week. I'm Jasper Jones. And I'm Maya Burgrass. And that's Sheldon from TV2. The, the Deuce. Deuce. Sheldon, that's your cue! As the Lady Chiefs failed to take... I just, um... Okay. What do you call a cow falling from the sky? Utterly horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. I'm Mr. Cow. What's your name? Um, <laughs> Sir Hayville. Oh, hey! <laughs> Look out! It's no Tim on the chopper. He's gonna all oh, ground patty, all oh, glue.